Next generation light anti-armor weapons, NLAW, primary use will be to defeat armor in close battle. Its secondary use will be to attack defended positions such as bunkers. Recognizing the potential for warfare in urban areas, it must be capable of being fired from within buildings. NLAW will be used by the infantry in conjunction with medium-range weapons, up to 2,000 to 3,000 meters, but will be the only individual anti-armor weapon for other arms and services. Ukraine has received widespread support from the United States and NATO countries. Keeping up with the NATO commitment, the United Kingdom has now sent special weaponry to Ukraine. Britain had announced on January 17 that it had begun sending anti-tank weapons to Ukraine to help defend itself against a potential Russian invasion. C-17 cargo planes of the Royal Air Force began flying sorties with next-generation light anti-tank weapons, or NLAS, to Borispol International Airport, west of Kiev, Ukraine's capital. Kiev has now received the British next-generation light anti-tank weapons to create deterrence against Moscow. The NLAW, main battle tank and light anti-tank weapon, is a one-shot infantry anti-tank system that consists of a disposable launcher preloaded with a single guided missile. The weapon can be used in two different modes, direct attack and top attack, in which the NLAW's munition is configured to detonate above the tank's weakest point. It is not yet known how many NLAWs Ukraine will receive. Video footage of the weaponry landing in Ukraine implies that hundreds of these missiles have already arrived, according to the drive. Anti-tank weapons have long been seen as a key equalizer for the Ukrainian military in any potential large-scale confrontation with the Russians, who have a general advantage in quantity and, in some aspects, quality, particularly when it comes to tanks and other heavy armored vehicles. The guidance system uses predicted line of sight, PLOS, technically, it is not a missile as it is not guided to the target. The firer activates the system and tracks the target for 2 to 3 seconds before firing. The guidance system then calculates the predicted flight path to ensure a hit, it is a fire and forget device. The firer can select overfly top attack, OTA, for use against main battle tanks and armored vehicles, or direct attack, DA, against soft-skinned vehicles and other targets. In OTA mode, the guidance algorithm optimizes the approach for an elevated flight path with a proximity fuse and in direct attack mode, the sensor system that maintains height is simply disconnected and the missile is impact fused. NLAW has a soft launch system that allows it to be fired from cover, inside buildings etc. It can also be fired without guidance prediction if the situation requires it. The 12.5 kg IM compliant system has an effective range as between 20 meters and 600 meters, the missile is 150 mm in diameter and the warhead, 102 mm diameter down angled at 90 degrees. NLAW is a maintenance-free disposable system, although the Trijicon Compact ACOG 2.5x20 site can be detached and reused if required. Unlike the NLAW, the US-made Javelin anti-tank missiles are extremely capable weapons that are fired from a reloadable launch system. They are frequently hailed as one of the country's most significant defense acquisitions in recent years. The Ukrainian military displayed the results of a live-fire demonstration of Javelins against targets that were supposed to simulate Russian tanks with makeshift cage armor on top last December. In recent months, Russian tanks in this configuration have been sighted near Ukraine's borders. The US administration has supplied more javelins to Ukraine, as well as other weapons and equipment, and is working on putting together other military aid packages. Beyond the United Kingdom, a number of America's allies and partners have been doing the same, with Estonia in particular withdrawing javelins from its own stockpiles to give to the Ukrainian military. Estonians have also been looking to deliver second-hand Soviet-era howitzers and ammo to Ukraine. The threat of a Russian invasion looms large, indicated by a recent cyberattack on Ukraine that disabled its key infrastructure, 
Besides the massive buildup of troops and armament from multiple sides and the joint drills with Belarus, Russia considers a possible Ukraine membership of NATO as a security threat that it cannot quite afford. The NATO members are expected to pour in equipment to avert a 2014-like situation that led to the Russian invasion and subsequent annexation of Crimea. Russia has already deployed more than 127,000 troops in the region, according to the latest intelligence estimate from the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, which was shared exclusively with CNN. Russia could potentially employ medium-range missile systems to attack key objects, according to the Ukrainian military, which noted that more tactical groups of Iskander missiles have been transported near the border. According to the assessment, there are 36 Iskander launchers near Ukraine as of mid-January. The Iskander missiles are capable of reaching targets 500 to 700 kilometers, 310 minus 430 miles away. This means Kiev, Ukraine's capital, is within the range of this lethal weapon. However, the main concern of Ukraine and its NATO partners remains the exercise that Russia is set to undertake with Belarus. The joint Russian-Belarusian drills will be held along Belarus' southern and western borders, near Ukraine and Poland. The exercise will begin in February and will be divided into two phases. The second phase of the exercises, scheduled for February 10-20, is officially aimed at preparing forces for suppressing and repelling external aggression in the course of a defensive operation, countering terrorism, and protecting the interests of the Union state, according to Russian Deputy Defense Minister Alexander Fomin. According to media reports, 12 Suhoi Su-35 fighter jets, two S-400 anti-air missile systems, and a Panzer missile system will be sent to Belarus for the first phase of the war games. Additionally, Russian forces have been amassing in four sites, according to an unclassified U.S. intelligence dossier, acquired by the Washington Post, which includes satellite images. It reveals 50 battlefield tactical groups are currently deployed, along with newly arrived tanks and artillery. Even though the exact equipment that Russia has deployed along the Ukrainian border remains unknown, some analysts have predicted that main battle tanks like T-90 and T-72B3 could be used in case of an invasion. The T-90 is a battle-hardened tank that has been deployed in Ukraine before. Countermeasure systems like SHTORA-1 could also be deployed to confuse the enemy anti-tank missiles, according to an analysis by Brent M. Eastwood, the defense editor of the 1949 website. Russia might also deploy its revered air defense system, the S-400, along with its massive advanced air power. Further, according to the new Ukrainian assessment, Russia backs more than 35,000 separatists in eastern Ukraine and has roughly 3,000 military soldiers stationed there. Moscow denies stationing troops in Ukraine's east.